So hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 5th of April and my office is still not fully ready, so I'm sitting on the floor <laughs> recording this on my laptop. As always, hopefully I've managed to get the chapters so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. No new videos this week, uh, should be back to normal next week. And I do apologize about the audio again, I'm running off my laptop. So on the compute side, the Azure Kubernetes service cost reviews have gone GA. So within the cost analysis area of the portal, I can now see uh, the, the aggregated cost for all of the associated infrastructure that powers an AKS cluster. Uh, I can see the namespaces, et cetera. So this is gonna just help give visibility into my costs related to AKS. Logic App connectors for the Azure Open AI services and Azure AI Search are now in preview. This would enable me through my workflows to integrate with the various Open AI services like the GPT models, but also with Azure AI Search, I can go into those hybrid queries, both lexical, so the keyword matching, but also the semantic meanings, that nearest neighbor, very useful for natural language, and then feed that into my calls to OpenAI, which will enable me to do things like retrieve augmented generation RAG, so that the generated content is based on my own content, not just what the model was trained on. Also, there are now Logic App connectors for the various IBM mainframe and mid-range systems that's gone GA. If you think about things like the IBM DB2, MQ, etc., I can now integrate those with my Logic Apps. Moving on. On the networking side, so ExpressRoute Metro has gone preview. So when you buy an ExpressRoute circuit, you get two connections. So within that peering location I select, I get two connections active active. So that gives me resiliency from a line failure, a router failure, but also during plan maintenance, I keep my connection. But these two connections are in that same physical facility. And so if that physical facility has an issue like happened in Chicago when it had the calling failures, well, both connections will be down. Express route Metro, I still have two connections, but each connection is now in a different physical facility, but within the same Metroplex, so the same city. So it gives me resiliency from a building failure, but not a larger scale city-wide failure. So think of it a little bit as similar to availability zones. So now I have these independent facilities, but still within a certain radius. This doesn't cost additional money, but again, it is previewed. Today, it's limited locations. Think Amsterdam, Singapore, and Zurich. And it works with both regular circuits and express route direct. So this would be considered a higher resiliency option compared to a regular express route. Of course, the maximum resiliency would be to have two distinct separate circuits, each in completely different peering geographies. Azure Virtual Network Manager security admin rules have gone GA. So remember, Azure Virtual Network Manager really has two key capabilities. One is connectivity. So I create groups of networks, and then it will define and create the connections between them so I don't have to do manual peerings anymore. I remove some of the limitations in scale with peerings. I can pick, do I want full mesh? Do I want hub and spoke? Or a hybrid of both of those. The security admin rules enable me to define, well, as the name suggests, rules for the flow of data. Now, this is applied before the network security groups that apply at a subnet or NIC level. And what that means is these are now centrally managed, and I could say allow, then the traffic would pass through for the particular rule and then go to the NSG. I could say deny, which means it would never even make the NSG, but I can say always allow, and where that occurs, it will bypass the NSG and always reach the target. So if I had certain mandated connectivity, maybe for patching or domain services, then I didn't want some local admin to be able to override, well, I could achieve that with the security admin rules. On the storage side, so Azure Backup now supports vaulted backup for Azure files. So ordinarily, Azure Backup acts as an orchestrator and creates and deletes snapshots for the storage account for the Azure files. It's not actually copying the data somewhere else. 
with vaulted backup selected, which is now an option, it will actually store that in the backup vault. So that would then let me do things like 99 year retention. I can use a customer managed key. I can enable soft delete. I can even enable the multi-user authorization, which enables me to get even better protection from malicious actions that might try and delete the backup vault. Well, now I have to actually have a authorization from potentially even a different tenant before those destructive actions can be performed. On the database side, so Azure Backup Long-Term Retention is now available for MySQL Flexible. This supports up to a 10-year pre-retention, and that is in preview. And then miscellaneous, it's happened to the Azure AD and Azure AD Preview and the MS Online PowerShell modules are now deprecated. I should have moved to the Microsoft Graph modules, but no longer are these old modules being supported. Also note the Azure AD Graph API that powers these legacy modules is also on the deprecation path because again, you should be using the Microsoft Graph API. So any apps created after June 30th, 2024, We'll get an error trying to use the legacy Azure AD Graph API. And then over time, they'll start to totally deprecate that as well. Azure API management has some updates. Remember, this provides central management and discovery of my company's API. So the developer portal is automatically generated, has got a refreshed experience. The V2 a tiers and our GA. So there's a basic V2 and a standard V2 tier. So they give different capabilities to the amount of cash, the number of requests included, uh, multiple custom domain support, VNet integration, self hosted, gateway, etc. They're going to vary between the basic V2 and standard V2 SKU. So you pick the one based on well, what I want to spend and what features I need. I can still use the classic pricing tiers, they're not going anywhere. So I just have additional options. And then the Azure Advisor Resiliency Reviews are now available in preview. So the Azure Advisor, remember, closely aligns with the well-architected framework, those five pillars. A resiliency review is something you request by your Microsoft account team. And they would then engage the Microsoft Cloud Security Architect engineers to perform the review and share prioritized recommendations. These will now be available in Advisor under the Manage Reviews area. And that is it. Hopefully this is the last update I need to do in less than optimal circumstances and should be back hopefully to doing new videos next week. But until next week, take care and thank you.